Good day, this is Brother Paul. This is Sister Faith. We are happy that you are joining us here in live streaming. So before we listen to the Word of God, may we welcome you to celebrate with us during praise and worship with our wonderful God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We come before you, Lord. Let us bow at His feet. 
my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. this blessed Sunday. Now, last week, we started off another part of the series that we have started last Easter Sunday. And that uh, series was about a season in the wilderness. And last week, we talked about what do people do in this season. And the first word that we studied was the word wonder. Now, today... We will go straight to our second point because I believe we are going to dwell deeper into this second thought that we have. The word that we will be studying today is the word grumble. Okay? Grumble. Now, what is the biblical definition of the word grumble? Now, in its Hebrew word, there are many or different applications for the word grumble. The first definition is to stop, huminto, 
No? Pangalawa, by implication to stay permanently. So, huminto and then to stay permanently, hindi na siya umalis sa kanyang kinalalagyan. And the third is to be obstinate. Being obstinate is having a hard-headed determination, a stubborn determination not to change your mind. So, if we... Um, mix all of these definitions together, we can, you know, we can conclude that grumbling in the Bible is about staying in that position or stopping and not yielding, not willing to change your position or change your mind. You're being hard-headed. You're being stubborn. Now, that unyielding attitude is how the Bible describes grumbling. So, when we talk about grumbling, let's get rid or, you know, let's erase our past or our misunderstandings of the word to grumble. Now, grumbling is not just, you know, asking a question to your supervisor or to your leader. Grumbling is this attitude where you refuse to back down from what you believe, even though the facts are laid out already before you. Grumbling is not just a one-time emotion. It is a decision to stop and stay in that negative thought. Now, brothers and sisters, ito pong grumbling, this attitude, we need to be very, very careful of because we find in the scriptures that it is infectious. Nakakahawa daw po ang attitude to be a grumbler. Exodus chapter 16 verse 2, And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Now, may kita po natin, no? social media has its Good points, bad points. Good points, it's easy. Right now, thank God for social media na nakapost po tayo ng mga ganito klaseng videos. We can share the Word of God. And people can just easily um, open up the page or click the, the video and they can watch and they, they can hear the good news. But also at the same time, people can easily um, share their their thoughts, their bad attitudes, grumble in or on social media, and it can easily spread to people. Now, how does it spread? How does it go through the people? Number one, well, false leaders spread it. Sa yung po mga bulaang uh, guro. Jude chapter 1 verse 16, these are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud-mouthed boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. Now, in the book of Jude, Jude talks about in the last days, and you know, we believe that we are living in the last days, that there will be false leaders who will be grumblers. And they have this agenda. Ano po yung gusto nila mangyari? They want to cause division. They want to deceive people. So let's be careful about it. False leaders spread this attitude of crumbling. And pangalawa po, well, unknowingly, our leaders can spread that emotion, grumbling as well. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 31, starting with verse 31, Then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the, the people, for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come from the Nephilim. 
and we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers. So we seem, and so we seemed to them. Now, basically, these people, whether they are false leaders or leaders, they are people of influence. People of influence who can start spreading a bad word, a bad report that people start to believe it and then cause grumbling to spread. When people start grumbling, they are focusing. That's th This is something that we need to learn also. When people start grumbling, they are focusing on a person or a group of people. Well, obviously, they are against the leader who they think is the cause of their problems. Exodus chapter 15, verse 24 and the people grumbled against Moses. And in Luke chapter 5 verse 30, and the Pharisees and, the, and their scribes grumbled at his disciples saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? So they were grumbling at the disciples, the Pharisees and their scribes. So we can see here that the people were grumbling towards their leader and there were people the pharisees and their scribes who were grumbling at the disciples but we need to understand as well bottom line they were not grumbling against their leader which was Moses or Aaron at that time they were grumbling against God Exodus chapter 16 Oh, sorry, Exodus chapter 16, verse 8. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Something that the Bible that teaches us or Moses has taught the people of Israel hey you're not grumbling against me actually you're grumbling against God the focus of their grumbling was God because it was not the idea of Moses and Aaron to bring them out of Egypt and into the wilderness it was God's idea God brought them out of Egypt a land of slavery and God is bringing them to the promised land. But there was this season of wilderness that they need to go through. Now, the people may have not deliberately do that or think about that in that way on purpose. But in God's eyes, they were grumbling against him. Let me say that again. The people may have not deliberately do that on purpose they were just focused on moses they were angry with moses they were you know why moses why did you bring us here bakit mo kami dinala dito sa desierto pinaikot ikot mo kami and ngayon wala kaming makain wala kaming mainom they are they were angry with moses they were grumbling against moses but deep inside their hearts god saw they were not grumbling against moses and aaron they were grumbling against him. That's why we always need to check our hearts. Tignan po natin ng ating mga puso, mga kaibigan, mga kapatid. We need to check our hearts before God. There may be things that we allow in our hearts or maybe in our heads to sink deep, deep down. And it's not pleasing to the Lord. Now, if we allow these thoughts to remain, we will ourselves take part in spreading this bad attitude to other people, people close to us, maybe even in our families, our friends, our loved ones. We need to be very careful, mga kapatid, not to allow this emotion, this negative emotion, grumbling to spread, especially to start with us now the question begs to be answered as well 
why did they grumble? And bottom line, it's all one single reason. Because of wrong perception. Number one, because they thought they will die. Exodus chapter 17 verse 3, But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? <laughs> now, brothers and sisters, it is understandable. In this season, being in the desert, in a wilderness, we are facing hard times. We need to set our expectations straight. The people were walking in the middle of a desert. You don't expect to find food and water easily. During these times, it's when you tighten your belts and not spend too much. Brothers and sisters, there are things that we need to do in this season. We realize, hey, I need to do something. I know that there are needs right now in my life. We are experiencing hard times. But I know God will never leave us and never forsake us. God will continue to bless the works of our hands. But the hard times are still there. But we know God is faithful. And everybody said. Now, the second thing, the second wrong perception that people have. They thought their life was better in Egypt. Numbers chapter 14, verse 2. And all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would that we had died in this wilderness? That's what we call slave mentality. Mga kapatid, being a slave is easy. You know, Somebody thinks for you. Hindi ka na babangon sa umaga thinking, ano bang gagawin ko ngayon? Well, somebody has laid it out for you already. And you have to do it. And somebody feeds you, your master. You look up to your master and you expect to be fed. You may not like it always, the food that is before you, but it's way better than what the people of Israel were experiencing right now. They don't have food. That's better than um, not having food, right? Now, just like them, we like things that we are used to have. We don't want sudden changes in our, in our environment or in our lifestyle. So that's the wrong perception. Number three, they thought that they deserved more. Matthew chapter 20, verse 9 to 13. And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, what did they do? They grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Now, bakit po sila, why did they grumble against the master? Very simple reason. They thought that they deserved more. Now, this in itself is a profound statement. When people start thinking that they deserve more, you better take note that they are already starting to show the signs of having a grumbling heart. Now, what happens if 
it doesn't come, what happens? Are we gonna trust God? Are we gonna continue to trust Him? Or are we gonna sink into negativity and blaming God for all of the troubles that we are experiencing right now? Because we don't see God moving. We don't see God's provision anymore. Brothers and sisters, all of these things that we receive right now, by the grace of God, thank you, Lord, by your grace. It's not because I deserve it, because of his grace in our lives. Number four, the fourth wrong perception people have. They think or they thought they were right. Luke chapter 19, verse 7. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Luke chapter 15, verse 2. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Now, the Pharisees grumbled at the disciples and at Jesus. Why? Because they think that how Jesus was doing ministry was completely wrong and that they are the ones who are doing it right. Now, of course, you know, if Jesus and his disciples were doing it the same way that they are doing it, then, well, that's good. They'll approve of it. But since because Jesus is doing it this way, the disciples are doing it this way, they are with sinners, eating with them, talking with them, having fellowship with them. That's, that's not in the rule book of these Pharisees. <laughs> they think that they are the ones that are right. And they think that Jesus and his disciples are doing it wrong. So those four wrong perceptions. Let's go to the effects. What are the effects of having a grumbling heart? Number one, we will never understand God's word or his will in our lives. John chapter 6 verse 41 to 44. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. The people grumbled amongst themselves about Jesus. And why? Because they couldn't understand what he was saying. They could not understand the words that were coming out of his mouth. The miracle that happened before this story was this multiplication of bread. They didn't understand its purpose. They wanted to follow Jesus because of the food that just miraculously came up from the ministry of Jesus. So they want to be with him. Free food. But Jesus was not talking about literal bread. But he was talking about spiritual food that he wants them to receive. That he wants them to understand. Maybe there are things in our hearts right now that we have allowed ourselves to grumble about God. Well, I could only think about one good example. A prayer that we felt was not answered. Brothers and sisters, if we allow a grumbling heart to take control in our lives, we will never understand His will. We will never understand His word in our lives. 
The second effect, we will defer the fulfillment of God's plans in our lives. Numbers chapter 14, verse 34, according to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, a year for each day, you shall bear your iniquity 40 years and you shall know my displeasure. Numbers chapter 14, verse, 30, verse sorry, Numbers 14, verse 36. And the men whom Moses sent out, sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the congregation grumble against him by bringing up a bad report about the land. Now, grumbling can cause the promises of God in our lives, the fulfillment of all these promises to be delayed how the trip towards the promised land could have been quick well I, i'm not talking about next day but it could it should have never reached 40 years for the people of israel to go and enter that promised land now the leaders in that story in numbers the leaders understood the leaders understood that this was the promised land god will help them conquer it but they relied on what they think they relied on their human understanding that with the facts that they have they they were like grasshoppers they were small compared to these people who are living in the promised land. They were so tall. They cannot win. How can we possibly win against them? So what did they do? They spread a bad report. So instead of trusting God, they spread a bad report. So instead of entering the promised land, I don't want to be a part of this. We're not sure if we are going to win this war. So let's just spread, spread a bad report about it. Now, leaders, if leaders know what is better, what they should be doing, and they do not follow what is supposed to be done because of what they want, because they think that it's impossible cannot be done or they cannot understand why they have to do it then leaders you are jeopardizing the people under your care if parents all the parents who are listening right now if you allow your children to be influenced by the world more than godly influence you are bringing destruction upon the future of your children Government leaders, spiritual leaders, all the same. If we do not take that brave step and believe, God has promises. God has said this. God has assured us that this is the way that we should go, the path that we should walk on. No matter the consequences, no matter the, the hardships, no matter the trials or persecutions that we will experience, we will go straight and receive the promise that God has for us. Amen and amen. Lastly, God's presence will come not to bring relief, but to bring judgment to a grumbling heart. Exodus chapter 16, verse 7. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. Hmm. James chapter 5, verse 9. Do not grumble against each, or sorry, do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My goal today is if you have been allowing bitterness to creep into your heart, I challenge you today to lay it all before our Heavenly Father to God. 
understand that we are in a season that we expect this season to be over with, but the things that we allow in our hearts, those stay, those remain in our hearts. And we need to be careful that we take them all out, that we do not allow this negative emotion, this grumbling heart, this grumbling, unyielding, stubborn heart to stop us from the plans, the purpose that God has for us. God is not the source of your problems, brothers and sisters. He is the solution. Now, I do not know what is in your heart right now, but I know God. He knows it. He knows what is inside your heart. He knows what is happening right now in your life. He doesn't want to condemn you. He doesn't want you to experience this separation from Him. He wants to reason, he wants to reason out with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to put things, to make it clear before you. So instead of us showing this obstinate stance, right? No. <laughs> Instead of us showing that to God, why don't we just come to Him and lay our burdens before Him? Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now. Those who have a heavy heart, those who are carrying bitterness, those who are having a grumbling heart, Maybe past promises or a prayer that they felt was not heard. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, wrong perceptions that they have. Father, we thank you that you have sent us your word today. That your word brings life. That your word brings truth. And Father, we need to embrace this truth in our lives. I commit my brothers and sisters into your hands, O God. Speak to them. Reason out with them, O God. Show to them the things, the, the path that they need to take. And Father, I pray that the heavy heart, the stony heart, the unyielding heart will be softened by your word and by your presence by the power of the holy spirit let those unyielding hearts grumbling hearts be melted away in jesus name we pray amen thank you for joining us today if you are blessed kindly please like and share our live streaming page and if you need prayer requests please send us messages here in our page and we are happy to pray for you. So thank you again and God bless. God bless you.